Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is, wherever you're watching. Welcome to Bridging the Gap, episode number 37. 37, William V. Thompson hanging out with you this morning. Your host, Count C.L. Glenn. I realized I was listening to, man, I don't know what podcast it was recently, but they, they stole my opening. Well, like, they they opened up the same way, like whatever time it, Colin Cowherd, the herd. Okay. That's how he opens up his show. <laughs> but you know what? It probably subconsciously. Uh, it's something I picked up. I used to listen to him every day okay. at lunchtime when he was on the radio when he was still with ESPN. All right, so then we took his opening, it sounds like. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, it's yeah. all good. <laughs> How you been, man? Doing fine, man, doing fine. Don't forget to catch that Netflix special okay. on, on Cap, man. Cap and it, yeah. Oh, man, it's good. It's about six episodes. He's very candid. They let him really just do his thing. It's really nice. It's worth seeing. Hey, I'm going to definitely check that out. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, you ready to get busy today? Yeah, man, what are we talking about? Hey, I want to talk about in Podcast 37, a spinoff from last time we talked about maxing the match. And I want to talk about investing. And remember, I'm doing old school. And then down the road, we'll do some new school things. And Mr. Cryptocurrency Investor here, he'll tell you more about that probably mm. podcast down the road. But I tell you right now, old school right now, not doing the crypto or the other things, name Bitcoin, et cetera. But I want to give you an old school way to build wealth. And like we said last time, Council on Podcast 36, that probably 60% of millionaires, this is how they build wealth. And I recognize and hanging out with you guys that that's changing really fast because of the online platforms and the new way of building wealth. And it's really investing. And I want to talk today about investing consistently in the S&P 500. Got it. Okay. Yes, sir. And you know, normally we don't give uh, specific recommendations or investments, but this is one that I feel so strongly in. And in just a little bit, I want to tell you, I'm going to jump and tell you why. Let, let, let me tell you why. I'm going to start there. First of all, what in the world is the S&P 500? Okay, here we go. It's actually here. Count. It's, it's the 500 best companies in America. Got it. You know, you look at that list, my friend, and you're going to see people like Apple. You're going to see Google, Amazon. You're going to see your Microsofts. You're going to see Tesla made it a couple of months ago. But think about this. It is the 500 best stocks. And I'll venture to say that probably in a year's time, 490 or 95 stay the same. You know, at one time, Macy's was here, but re retail, retail went through a bad spot. So Macy's got pulled out, and I think Tesla might have got put in. Got it. But, but it's where the big boys are. And see, the other thing I like about it is over the last 50 years, these 500 or S&P 500 they have averaged, averaged about 12% a year. Now, let that sink in count, 12% a year, 12% mm -hmm. a year. You're, they're never going to probably make 50%. That's been very, very rare, but they're not going to lose a lot either. But imagine over a 50-year time period, we had the recession with the Great Recession. We had the real estate collapse and bubble. We had uh, the stock market bubble. We had probably a couple of wars during that time. We had multiple wars yeah, during that time. But the point is 50 years averaging 12%. Then the fourth reason why I love the S&P, that people need to get to know it, and I'll even give you a ticker symbol that we use, SPY, SPY. Mm -hmm. And there are many ones out there, but that's just one of many, SPY. And the third reason I love it, Count, is because it's the best indicator of the overall market. Okay. You know, when you look at this sheet, you're going to see a lot of technology. You're going to see some, re some, re some real estate. You're going to see some real estate investment. You're going to see some retail, healthcare, educational companies. You're going to see trucking. Again, it's diversified over the good U.S. of A. And the fourth thing that I like it is everybody's trying to beat it. For example, think about it. Okay, it's basketball season now. Okay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Who's the team to beat? Right now? Right now, it's team to beat. Golden State or Chicago. Oh, Golden Surprisingly, State. Surprisingly, they both Ooh, like okay. six and seven and one. Okay, but that's now though, right? Right now. Okay. In football, who's the team to beat? Uh, you got to go with the GOAT. You know that. No, sir. Oh, the Rams are the team to beat right now. Tampa Bay will we'll repeat. Tampa Bay just lost to St. Louis. That's okay. The team to beat right now, as we speak. Okay. St. Uh, the Rams. Okay. L.A. Rams. Tampa Bay will repeat. Here's my point, though. Here's my point, though. <laughs> See, in the S and P, <coughs> everybody's trying to beat it. You, bro, you got it. Okay. Everybody's trying to beat. I mean, these are that twelve percent ones. They're trying to beat the S&P 12%. You're right. Got it. Got it. And, and over 50 years, 
only 25% beat them. Now we're talking about managed funds, whereby they, they pay people millions of dollars to do research and to learn. And over only 25% of these managed funds, the Golden Sachs, the, the of the Fidelities, only 25% beat them year to year. And those 25 aren't the same 25. They rotate. Gotcha. So hold on, quick question. <clears throat> mm -hmm. You said Fidelity, Golden Sachs. Your Golden Sachs, Sachs your Merrill Lynch. Uh, your Morgan Stanley's, the big boys that that, are, that have the the Harvard and the Princeton people on their teams, yeah, those uh, people. Okay, so they try to beat the S and P five hundred. Everybody's trying to beat the S and P five hundred. That that that's the gold standard, man. Okay, so is the S and P five hundred? I know it's a list of the. Mm -hmm. Is that a, like an entity in itself? Well, it actually is. And we use the word, it's an index fund. Got it. In other words, when I think about the SPYs, what I recommend looking at, but there are many more, mm -hmm. everything is in that one bread basket. Got you. So when you invest in it, you invest in it all 500. You got it, my friend. Ch chunks of each. That's right. But those managed funds are trying to beat the S&P 500. Always. That, got that, it. That's always one of the goals is how do we do versus the S&P? And like I said before, Every year, the same one doesn't beat the S&P. Gotcha. But about one out of four or 25% will beat it on a rotating basis. So why wouldn't you want to invest in the entity that has a proven record, that's stable, and everybody's shooting for you, but very few people can do it consistently? So it's like the Bulls in the 90s, everybody trying to beat them. Bulls in the 90s, or the Steelers in the 80s, okay? Uh, before my time. Oh, before, before my his time. <laughs> but still, check them out. Steelers in the 80s, check it out. Or even the recent Warriors, you know. You got they it. They had man. a little run. That's right. Okay. Everybody's trying to beat them. Everybody's trying to beat so them. So it's like the whole league against one team. You got it. It's one team. Okay. And that and one team is the S&P 500. You got it. Got it. And three out of four don't do it. Three out of four. I don't yeah. care. I don't care how much Tesla they have or Microsoft or United Health, et cetera. They, t Tesla may beat this year. But what about next year and the next year? We're talking about 50 consecutive years. Gotcha. So that's why we strongly recommend consistently do it. Okay? Yes, sir. Now, let me put some numbers to it. Numbers okay. to it. Okay? And we talked about it last time in Podcast 36 about ma maxing Max and the a match. match. See, the ultimate goal is, and I know sometimes that 20 years seem like a long horizon for people, but I want you to hear this. This needs to be one. One of multiple ways to build wealth. Got one. it. And this is probably the most conservative one. Conservative one. We're going to get involved in some more online, some real estate, flipping some crypto within time, et cetera. But this is one that you want to put on automatic pilot because right now you were 30 what? 37. 37. You're going to blink one day, brother, and be 57. <laughs> and you're going to wonder, how did I get there? Here, here you go. Go. $1,000 you, you invest per month over 20 years. Okay. Thousand dollars you invest a month over twenty years, and that's why we constantly say that cash flow is the rocket fuel to build wealth. You set aside that thousand like you're paying a bill, whether it be on your job, whether it be in your company. Like you have a company, and your company can definitely set up a four hundred one k, whereby they take it out of your paycheck, your mm -hmm. company through TD Ameritrade. Your company then will match that. So between what you decide to have out. And what you decide your company will match, let that be a grand a month. Got it. Now, over 20 <clears throat> years, gonna come, your boys will be, what, 33? No, 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 I'll be tw 29, 29 and 29. 27. Whoa, well, you've been talking about some grandkids then, won't you? You've been looking <laughs> so after that man. But again, it's going to come. But the great thing about it is if you put in five and your company does five, you would have put in only a quarter of a million dollars. That's all you would have put in. Got it. But with the company's match, whether it's your company or the one you work for, they would have put in a quarter of a million. But guys, that money after 20 years would be close to a million dollars. Wow. A million dollars. And I know in 20 years, a million dollars won't be what it is today, but it still sounds good. Yeah. Even when I first got married 30 years ago, the goal was to get a million dollars. And that million dollars still is a goal that many people have. I'm sure over time it will change but just the standpoint of having one automated investment system that creates a million dollars is pretty impressive. And counsel, if a person were to do this in a Roth IRA, mm -hmm. guess what? That money could be legally tax-free. Wow. Legally tax-free. Wow. So that's why we're saying invest consistently in the S&P automated. But you got to build your cash flow 
to be able to put that five and or a thousand in that man. And I'm going to tell you, that's it. That's why cash flow is so important, though. Because without it, you couldn't even use this investment tool. You cannot do it, my friend. Yeah. You cannot do it. Like I said before, uh, cash flow, now age does not retire you. Cash, cash flow, flow does. Retire. I mean, think about the guy, you know, the guy who's building a lot of the properties, a friend of yours out in uh, Tennessee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He, he's what, 35-ish or so? Yeah. See, again, he's 35. He can do what he want to do when he wants to do it, not because of his age, but all because of cash flow. He has chosen real estate, but but you're going to have to find something that you choose, that you believe in, that you dive into. And my final comment here <coughs> in the second slide here, you got to understand it before you undertake it. If you're going to do real estate, like I saying now you're into development now, it sounds good, but the power behind it is you must understand it well enough that you could sit down and say, CC, let me tell you about these 91 acres. You yeah, 91 acres. 91 acres. Here's the game plan to make a couple of million. To be able to walk that thing out and CC goes, I understand that. Then that's a great sign. So whatever avenues that you choose, avenues, plurality there, to build generational wealth, make sure that whoever is not involved, your spouse, your covenant partner, maybe a teenage child, that you can explain to them where they get it. Because when you understand, that's when the creativity, that's when the add-on strategies come in, and that's how you will build wealth. Again, it goes back to an old saying, man, a perfected passion produces prosperity. Produces prosperity. you got to be passionate about it. So would, would you, can you imagine a scenario where you won't recommend someone to do this? Um, it, it, it's really not. Okay. It's, it's really not. Uh, I'm going to put everybody in it. I, I, want, I want everybody at a minimal to be in it as a starting point because it just makes sense a long-term investment. Makes part. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. Good stuff. All right, my friend. Well, I'm done for the day, man. I'm done for the day until we get back next week. That wraps up episode 37. I'm your host, Count C.O. Glenn. Hey, William V. Thompson. <laughs>